lecture will run for 20 to 30 minutes. A question and answer portion will follow after. Ask questions by typing in the comments box in FB Live and YouTube Live or by typing in the UP Manila Livestream Q&A box on the right lower corner of your screen. A link to an online evaluation form will be provided at the end of the webinar and will also be sent to your email address after the webinar. Please wait for a confirmation email for up to two days after the webinar. To receive email reminders for future webinars, please register at bit.ly slash mewebinars2020. For any other inquiries about the Covigilance webinars, please contact us at immunity.msps at gmail.com. We would also like to invite you to download the Immunity mobile app. It's a user-friendly, physician-guided health mobile app which features an immunization record and tracker, an information atlas on all vaccines available in the Philippines, and frequently asked questions and myths on vaccination. It is currently available for free on Google Play Store. Search Immunity Mu Sigma Phi Medical Sorority Incorporated and click Install. Welcome to today's webinar. For years now, Immunity, an ounce of prevention, one of the flagship service projects of the Mu Sigma Phi sorority, has been conducting public health lectures dedicated to relevant and pressing health matters in the country. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we aim to continue disseminating information through Immunity's co-vigilance webinars. In collaboration with the Dr. Salvacion or Gachalian Memorial Webinar Lectures, the Co-Vigilance Webinar Series of the Mu Sigma Phi Medical Sorority, in partnership with the City of Manila, the Philippine Foundation for Vaccination, the UP College of Medicine, the Philippine General Hospital, and the Mu Sigma Phi Foundation present to you Immunization in a Time of Pandemia a three-part webinar series starting with Balik Tiwala, Balik Bakuna, debunking vaccination myths around the COVID-19 pandemic. This webinar is free and open to all. We are now using FB Live at MSPS Immunity and YouTube Live at tinyurl.com slash MSPS Immunity Webinar and UP Manila Livestream. If you are encountering problems in internet connectivity, Kindly refresh the page. The webinars will be recorded and uploaded to our Facebook and YouTube accounts. For UP Manila live stream, kindly turn up the volume using the audio icon. For other problems, please refer to the downloadable guide at the bottom of the live stream window. If you have not yet registered, please register on site at the registration link for today's webinar in the description box of Facebook Live or at the bottom of the live stream window for you to avail of a certificate of attendance. Registration is free and open to medical and allied medical professionals and students and lay observers. Once you have registered, the confirmation email will be sent 24 hours after the webinar. Please ensure that you complete this step in order to receive your certificate of attendance. Make sure that your details are correct. 
the webinar lecture will run for 20 to 30 minutes. A question and answer portion will follow after. Ask questions by typing in the comments box in FB Live and YouTube Live or by typing in the UP Manila Livestream Q&A box on the right lower corner of your screen. A link to an online evaluation form will be provided at the end of the webinar and will also be sent to your email address after the webinar. Please wait for a confirmation email for up to two days after the webinar. To receive email reminders for future webinars, please register at bit.ly slash mewebinars2020. For any other inquiries about the Covigilance webinars, please contact us at immunity.msps at gmail.com. We would also like to invite you to download the Immunity mobile app. It's a user-friendly, physician-guided health mobile app which features an immunization record and tracker, an information atlas on all vaccines available in the Philippines, and frequently asked questions and myths on vaccination. It is currently available for free on Google Play Store. Search Immunity Mu Sigma Phi Medical Sorority Incorporated and click Install. Welcome to today's webinar. For years now, Immunity, an ounce of prevention, one of the flagship service projects of the Mu Sigma Phi sorority, has been conducting public health lectures dedicated to relevant and pressing health matters in the country. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we aim to continue disseminating information through Immunity's co-vigilance webinars. In collaboration with the Dr. Salvacion or Gachalian Memorial Webinar Lectures, the Co-Vigilance Webinar Series of the Mu Sigma Phi Medical Sorority, in partnership with the City of Manila, the Philippine Foundation for Vaccination, the UP College of Medicine, the Philippine General Hospital, and the Mu Sigma Phi Foundation present to you Immunization in a Time of Pandemia a three-part webinar series starting with Balik Tiwala, Balik Bakuna, debunking vaccination myths around the COVID-19 pandemic. This webinar is free and open to all. We are now using FB Live at MSPS Immunity and YouTube Live at tinyurl.com slash MSPS Immunity Webinar and UP Manila Livestream. If you are encountering problems in internet connectivity, Kindly refresh the page. The webinars will be recorded and uploaded to our Facebook and YouTube accounts. For UP Manila live stream, kindly turn up the volume using the audio icon. For other problems, please refer to the downloadable guide at the bottom of the live stream window. If you have not yet registered, please register on site at the registration link for today's webinar in the description box of Facebook Live or at the bottom of the live stream window for you to avail of a certificate of attendance. Registration is free and open to medical and allied medical professionals and students and lay observers. Once you have registered, the confirmation email will be sent 24 hours after the webinar. Please ensure that you complete this step in order to receive your certificate of attendance. 
make sure that your details are correct. The webinar lecture will run for 20 to 30 minutes. A question and answer portion will follow after. Ask questions by typing in the comments box in the FB Live and YouTube Live or by typing in the UP Manila Livestream Q&A box on the right lower corner of your screen. A link to an online evaluation form will be provided at the end of the webinar and will also be sent to your email address after the webinar. Please wait for a confirmation email for up to two days after the webinar. To receive email reminders for future webinars, please register at bit.ly slash mewebinars2020. For any other inquiries about the Covigilance webinars, please contact us at immunity.msps at gmail.com. We would also like to invite you to download the Immunity mobile app. It's a user-friendly, physician-guided health mobile app which features an immunization record and tracker, an information atlas on all vaccines available in the Philippines, and frequently asked questions and myths on vaccination. It is currently available for free on Google Play Store. Search Immunity Mu Sigma Phi Medical Sorority Incorporated and click Install. The webinar will begin in 15 minutes. Welcome to today's webinar. For years now, Immunity, an ounce of prevention, one of the flagship service projects of the Mu Sigma Phi sorority, has been conducting public health lectures dedicated to relevant and pressing health matters in the country. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we aim to continue disseminating information through Immunity's Covigilance webinars. In collaboration with the Dr. Salvation or Gachalian Memorial Webinar Lectures, the Covigilance webinar series of the Mu Sigma Phi Medical Sorority, in partnership with the City of Manila, the Philippine Foundation for Vaccination, the UP College of Medicine, the Philippine General Hospital, and the Mu Sigma Phi Foundation present to you Immunization in a Time of Pandemia, a three-part webinar series, starting with Baliktiwala, Balikbakuna, debunking vaccination myths around the COVID-19 pandemic. This webinar is free and open to all. We are now using FB Live at MSPS Immunity and YouTube Live at tinyurl.com slash MSPS Immunity Webinar and UP Manila Livestream. If you are encountering problems in internet connectivity, kindly refresh the page. The webinars will be recorded and uploaded to our Facebook and YouTube accounts. For UP Manila live stream, kindly turn up the volume using the audio icon. For other problems, please refer to the downloadable guide at the bottom of the live stream window. If you have not yet registered, please register on-site at the registration link for today's webinar in the description box of Facebook Live or at the bottom of the live stream window for you to avail of a certificate of attendance. Registration is free and open to medical and allied medical professionals and students and lay observers. Once you have registered, 
the confirmation email will be sent 24 hours after the webinar. Please ensure that you complete this step in order to receive your certificate of attendance. Make sure that your details are correct. The webinar lecture will run for 20 to 30 minutes. A question and answer portion will follow after. Ask questions by typing in the comments box in FB Live and YouTube Live or by typing in the UP Manila Livestream Q&A box on the right lower corner of your screen. A link to an online evaluation form will be provided at the end of the webinar and will also be sent to your email address after the webinar. Please wait for a confirmation email for up to two days after the webinar. To receive email reminders for future webinars, please register at bit.ly slash mewebinars2020. For any other inquiries about the Covigilance webinars, please contact us at immunity.msps at gmail.com. We would also like to invite you to download the Immunity Mobile app. It's a user-friendly, physician-guided health mobile app which features an immunization record and tracker, an information atlas on all vaccines available in the Philippines, and frequently asked questions and myths on vaccination. It is currently available for free on Google Play Store. Search Immunity Mu Sigma Phi Medical Sorority Incorporated and click Install. Welcome to today's webinar. For years now, Immunity, an ounce of prevention, one of the flagship service projects of the Mu Sigma Phi sorority, has been conducting public health lectures dedicated to relevant and pressing health matters in the country. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we aim to continue disseminating information through Immunity's co-vigilance webinars. In collaboration with the Dr. Salvacion R. Gachalian Memorial Webinar Lectures, the Co-Vigilance Webinar Series of the Mu Sigma Phi Medical Sorority, in partnership with the City of Manila, the Philippine Foundation for Vaccination, the UP College of Medicine, the Philippine General Hospital, and the Mu Sigma Phi Foundation present to you Immunization in a Time of Pandemia a three-part webinar series, starting with Balik Tiwala, Balik Bakuna, debunking vaccination myths around the COVID-19 pandemic. This webinar is free and open to all. We are now using FB Live at MSPS Immunity and YouTube Live at tinyurl.com slash MSPS Immunity Webinar and UP Manila Livestream. If you are encountering problems in internet connectivity, Kindly refresh the page. The webinars will be recorded and uploaded to our Facebook and YouTube accounts. For UP Manila live stream, kindly turn up the volume using the audio icon. For other problems, please refer to the downloadable guide at the bottom of the live stream window. If you have not yet registered, please register on site at the registration link for today's webinar in the description box of Facebook Live or at the bottom of the live stream window for you to avail of a certificate of attendance. Registration is free and open to medical and allied medical professionals and students and lay observers. 
once you have registered, the confirmation email will be sent 24 hours after the webinar. Please ensure that you complete this step in order to receive your certificate of attendance. Make sure that your details are correct. The webinar lecture will run for 20 to 30 minutes. A question and answer portion will follow after. Ask questions by typing in the comments box in FB Live and YouTube Live or by typing in the UP Manila Livestream Q&A box on the right lower corner of your screen. A link to an online evaluation form will be provided at the end of the webinar and will also be sent to your email address after the webinar. Please wait for a confirmation email for up to two days after the webinar. To receive email reminders for future webinars, please register at bit.ly slash mewebinars2020. For any other inquiries about the Covigilance webinars, please contact us at immunity.msps at gmail.com. We would also like to invite you to download the Immunity Mobile app. It's a user-friendly, physician-guided health mobile app which features an immunization record and tracker, an information atlas on all vaccines available in the Philippines, and frequently asked questions and myths on vaccination. It is currently available for free on Google Play Store. Search Immunity Mu Sigma Phi Medical Sorority Incorporated and click Install. The webinar will begin in 5 minutes. Welcome to today's webinar. For years now, Immunity, an ounce of prevention, one of the flagship service projects of the Mu Sigma Phi sorority, has been conducting public health lectures dedicated to relevant and pressing health matters in the country. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we aim to continue disseminating information through Immunity's Covigilance webinars. In collaboration with the Dr. Salvacion R. Gachalian Memorial Webinar Lectures, the Covigilance webinar series of the Mu Sigma Phi Medical Sorority, in partnership with the City of Manila, the Philippine Foundation for Vaccination, the UP College of Medicine, the Philippine General Hospital, and the Mu Sigma Phi Foundation present to you Immunization in a Time of Pandemia, a three-part webinar series starting with Balik Tiwala, Balik Bakuna, debunking vaccination myths around the COVID-19 pandemic. This webinar is free and open to all. We are now using FB Live at MSPS Immunity and YouTube Live at tinyurl.com slash MSPS Immunity Webinar and UP Manila Livestream. If you are encountering problems in internet connectivity, kindly refresh the page. The webinars will be recorded and uploaded to our Facebook and YouTube accounts. For UP Manila Livestream, kindly turn up the volume using the audio icon. For other problems, please refer to the downloadable guide at the bottom of the Livestream window. If you have not yet registered, Please register on-site at the registration link for today's webinar in the description box of Facebook Live or at the bottom of the live stream window for you to avail of a certificate of attendance. 
registration is free and open to medical and allied medical professionals and students and lay observers. Once you have registered, the confirmation email will be sent 24 hours after the webinar. Please ensure that you complete this step in order to receive your certificate of attendance. Make sure that your details are correct. The webinar lecture will run for 20 to 30 minutes. A question and answer portion will follow after. Ask questions by typing in the comments box in FB Live and YouTube Live or by typing in the UP Manila live stream Q&A box on the right lower corner of your screen. A link to an online evaluation form will be provided at the end of the webinar and will also be sent to your email address after the webinar. Please wait for a confirmation email for up to two days after the webinar. To receive email reminders for future webinars, please register at bit.ly slash mewebinars2020. For any other inquiries about the Covigilance webinars, please contact us at immunity.msps at gmail.com. We would also like to invite you to download the Immunity Mobile app. It's a user-friendly, physician-guided health mobile app which features an immunization record and tracker, an information atlas on all vaccines available in the Philippines, and frequently asked questions and myths on vaccination. It is currently available for free on Google Play Store. Search Immunity Mu Sigma Phi Medical Sorority Incorporated and click Install. Horatio Imperata, on the threat from COVID-19. God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has claimed lives and has affected many. We pray for your grace for the people tasked with studying the nature and cause of this virus and its disease and of stemming the tide of its transmission. Guide the hands and minds of medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion, and of those governments and private agencies that must find cure and solution to this pandemic. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Grant us the grace to work for the good of all and to help those in need. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Mary, help of all Christians, pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Welcome to today's webinar. For years now, Immunity, an ounce of prevention, one of the flagship service projects of the Mu Sigma Phi sorority, has been conducting annual forums dedicated to relevant and pressing health matters in the country. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we have aimed to disseminate information through the digital platform through our co-vigilance webinars. Today, the Mu Sigma Phi Medical Sorority, in partnership with the City of Manila, Philippine Foundation for Vaccination, University of the Philippines College of Medicine, the Philippine General Hospital, the Mu Sigma Phi Foundation, and Merck Sharp and Dome present to you Balik Tiwala, Balik Bakuna, debunking vaccination myths around the time of COVID-19 pandemic.
This webinar is free and open to all. The lecture will run for 20 to 30 minutes. A question and answer portion will follow after. Ask questions or comment by typing.
the most cost-effective health investment, making immunization really a cornerstone in the efforts of most countries towards achieving health for all. Do you remember what this illness is and how immunization was an important strategy, the main strategy to eradicate it? You are correct. This is smallpox. And there was, a, there was a time in our history when smallpox was a significant threat to the whole world. When I was like including this slide in my previous lectures, pre-COVID, it was very difficult for us to understand exactly how this threat, something like an illness, could affect the whole world. But now in the context of COVID and living our every single day in this COVID pandemic, we realize just how important it is to really try our best to control illnesses, particularly infections. And as great a threat as smallpox was, in 1980, it was declared by WHO to have been eradicated. And in fact, there's this Rahimu Banu from Bangladesh, and he's the last known case of a naturally acquired smallpox. And it was, uh, he had this in 1978, and he's supposed to be the last person who had this illness. And that's thank you to the success of vaccination. If you think about how many died of smallpox, uh, it was estimated by that as much as half a billion people may have died from this illness. And soon after vaccination, so this graph on the left is the reported number of smallpox cases in 950, 1950. But look what happened as soon as more and more got vaccinated with the smallpox vaccine. In time, it was indeed eradicated. So this is something that we're looking forward to in the uh, development of COVID, of the COVID vaccine. We have to believe in the science that vaccines work. And they work by averting a lot of illnesses. Okay, so in this slide, we've seen uh, many, many cases averted, which in time translate to a lot of economic savings. So not only are lives saved, there's a lot of savings also in terms of dollars saved. So there's this article that was recently uh, printed or published in the internet by Max Rosser. And it tells us that our history is a battle against microbes. We lost terribly before science, public health, but the vaccines allowed us to protect ourselves. So for example, here, if you look at these graphs, how deaths were prevented by the presence of the smallpox vaccine before and after the development of the vaccine. Similarly, for polio, how many cases and how many deaths were averted because of the vaccine in the United States? And here are the graphs for measles before and after the introduction of the measles vaccines. So let me be a little bit technical, just describe how vaccines work. Uh, I gave this series of slides to college students, so bear with me now. So we want our immune system to be robust or strong. And that's how the vaccines um, work within our human bodies. So, Think of what happens inside you whenever you get um, a vaccine, you know, when the doctor uh, gives you that uh, injection or shot. You know? So there's the, uh, what we call antigen presenting cells, and they actually look 
go around the body looking for invaders and they might when the vaccine is introduced catch the antigens that the vaccines are uh, introduced to you and because of this interaction with the apc or antigen presenting cell it starts off a cascade of uh, interactions with the other immune cells in our body, such as the T helper cells and the B cells. So, siguro nagiging useful to sa mga medical students and other biology students. It uh, starts off making your plasma B cells and making it possible for them to produce yung tinatawag nating antibodies. No? So because of the vaccine antigens that we introduce, whether they're proteins or parts of the attenuated viruses, they are able to make this cascade of uh, changes to make the helper cells produce the antibodies we want. On the other hand, it's also possible that some T helper cells actually engulf the antigens so that in time, these infected cells are destroyed. Okay. So what happens naman when... Um, so this last slide tells us that this becomes a series, kaya parang we want... Um, there's a schedule for your vaccines and some of the vaccines are repeatedly given so that it induces the production of memory cells. So even if your vaccines were given in childhood, it will still be protective even in your adult life because of the presence of these many cells that keep on like uh, being there for you because of the memory cells. Okay. So what happens naman when you now are in a situation when you encounter the actual bugs, the actual bacteria or the actual virus? So because your body is already vaccinated, then you already have, as we said, all these T memory cells and B memory cells and your plasma cells. So kahit na meron ng germs that is trying to overwhelm your system, you have already enough cells or malakas na immune system, you know, your immune system is strong enough to be able to fight off all of these new bugs that you are seeing. Medyo naging technical, so I tried to put this. I hope it works. Oh, parang ayaw niya mag-work. Uh, wait lang. Uh, sorry, parang I tried to put a cartoon telling us how exactly how vaccines help us. So it makes your immune system stronger, uh, starting off in childhood and persisting throughout life, through adult life. Okay, so vaccines, there are what we call vaccine preventable diseases and it has to do with infections that are high burden or common, infections that lead to a lot of death or high morbidity or mortality infections and infections that can lead to cancer. So there are vaccines that are for or against these kinds of infections. So here is the list of the vaccine-preventable diseases and the deaths caused by them. Okay. So you would see na significant pa rin yung uh, deaths from TB. But I'll not discuss TB here because that's a completely different complex illness. Um, but measles, pertussis, hep B, HIV, HIV, and the tetanus and all other vaccines show here that there's still significant amounts of death. So let me just discuss some of the VPDs for common infections. So ito yung influenza or we call it flu or trangkaso. Most people would say trangkaso lang yan. And most people think uh, of this as diarrhea or vomiting illness, but it's really all about mostly respiratory symptoms, fever, headache, sore throat, fever, aches, body aches, and cough. So makikita mo yung ubo ng ubo. There's these droplets that are released into the environment. 
if you look at the global map, um, this was in 2019. This is how much influenza we saw last year. And the little circles has to do with the different types of subtypes of viruses that are present in different parts of the world. This is uh, influenza today in 2020. Parang walang masyadong laman yung map. But we think um, the people who made this um, in the WHO tell us to be cautious about interpreting this one. And maybe it's only because we're all into COVID and we have not been seeing or doing the surveillance for influenza as we should. No? So influenza is highly contagious and sometimes it leads to a serious illness. Okay. Uh, it causes a lot of deaths, particularly for some age groups, yung mga more than 65 years old, and the fatality rate can be very high. We have influenza in the Philippines. In fact, it's part of our top 10 causes of morbidity. And surveillance efforts, for example, from the RITM shows that um, there are different viruses present and influenza is one of them. When you think of influenza, you see that there's significant economic burden kasi uh, maraming nag absent from influenza. There may be a lot of illnesses related to influenza. There might be hospitalizations related to uh, elderly who get influenza. And in fact, when we look at uh, influenza in the Philippines, we see na merong mga times of the year that it's actually more prevalent. No? So when we look at this particular graphs, we see na may times of the year that it's more, uh, when it happens more. So ngayon, like ngayon, July na. So expect natin there will be more people consulting for what sounds like influenza, mostly respiratory symptoms. And sometimes it overlaps with the symptoms of COVID. Okay. Here naman, it shows na iba-iba palang strain. So this is the reason why we need the shot every year. Kasi the virus strains really change. And actually, um, the vaccine is most effective when the circulating viruses are well matched with the viruses that are contained in the vaccines. No? So somebody from WHO and the experts actually try to formulate the vaccines every year. And uh, they produce this based on surveillance uh, data. And each year, we need to get our shot. Previously, we hear about the trivalent, so every vaccine has the two subtypes of influenza A and one subtype of B. Pero recently, since about 2015 in the Philippines, we started to talk about quadrivalent. So yun po yung isang take-home take message today. Ang um, dapat na natin, the type of vaccine we should be receiving and asking from our doctors is the quadrivalent type. So there's two subtypes of influenza A and two uh, subtypes of uh, influenza B present in the virus, in the vaccine that you should be receiving this year, okay? Who are at risk? So you would see in the bottom, pregnant women, those with chronic illnesses, elderly more than 65 babies up to two years old children up to five years old and healthcare workers are especially at risk for influenza so before parang the philippine recommendations was for 65 years old and above tapas naging 50 and above but now this uh, the most recent recommendations of PISMID is to give influenza vaccine to all including all healthy individuals from six months and older. Some countries have this uh, parang immune, universal influenza immunization program. We don't have this here in the Philippines, but it's something to think about. And it seems, for example, for Canada, for Ontario, the province of Ontario in Canada, 
who has this uh, program, universal program for their citizens, you would see na parang malaki yung benefit. No? It reduces office visits, emergency room visits, and hospitalizations and deaths uh, among those who are part of this program. Okay, so that's only number one high burden infection. The second one is chicken pox. So merong bakuna for chicken pox. Chicken pox or bulutong tubig. Um, it's very highly contagious kasi airborne. So ang um, significant nito ay it really gives a lot of... Sometimes we think, oh, it's good to have the children have them kasi habang bata pa. But it can really lead to pneumonia or meningitis. So as much as possible, let's try to get our children vaccinated as adults if you're still not um, protected against this, then maybe you need your varicella shots. The next one is uh, the next group of illnesses, your measles or tigdas, mumps or beke, rubella or tigdas hangin. No? So measles, again, highly contagious because of uh, airborne respiratory droplets. Um, again, maybe you would say it's just a rash, but uh, there are complications uh, that can be, be be serious for all age groups. So this includes um, serious complications such as pneumonia and encephalitis. Global measles coverage have been very good. So the incidence of um, measles have been going down over uh, the last several decades. Okay. But I have a caveat to that later on. Uh, rubella, yung tigdas hangin, it's a really mild rash. German measles ang tawag sa kanya most of the time or a three-day measles. So, but then again, for some groups, particularly for those pregnant without um, immunization yet, uh, there's these serious problems for unborn babies. They can uh, present with the classical triad of rubella or congenital infections, uh, including cataract, cardiac abnormalities, and deafness. And of course, the complications of mumps. Parang okay, madali lang naman magpabakuna, so let's not have these complications of mumps. The next group of highly high burden infections are the tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis. Uh, sometimes the medical students now don't hear a lot about this anymore because uh, it's been mostly prevented because of the uh, DPT, no? the DPT, diphtheria pertussis tetanus vaccines that are already available and part of our immunization program, even in childhood. But they do lead to some complications, particularly tetanus. So how are we preventing this high burden infection? So fortunately, the Department of Health gives uh, priority for this very highly high burden vaccine preventable diseases through programs of the DOH. The next group of infections are those associated with high morbidity or mortality. Uh, this one's uh, ang pinaka most common and maybe the only one I will uh, discuss briefly is the infections related to pneumococcus or streptococcus pneumoniae. This is a bacteria. So there's a lot of disease manifestation. So it's just not pneumonia. Sometimes there's meningitis. And sometimes when it happens, it really can lead to illnesses, particularly in our vulnerable patients. So as we age and as we have more of the chronic illnesses, the uh, risk and the occurrence of these pneumococcal infections actually increase. So ang tawag sa kanya ay IPD or invasive pneumococcal disease. And you would see that the number of cases increase depending on what kind of patient you are. So over the years, there's been pneumococcal vaccines now that try to address this. Yung sinasabi nilang every five years, this is the PPVs. And the PCVs or the lifetime kind of uh, 
uh, pneumococcal vaccine. This is how they work. They kind of work similarly with some minor differences. But for adults, both vaccines are recommended. For children, it's the PCV that's necessary. Okay, so this is the serotypes niya tanong nila bakit yung 23 cha 13 diba so there are different serotypes that are present so there's a benefit in getting both of them which is the recommendation for adults so who would benefit from pneumococcal vaccines these are the groups mostly adults um adults 65 years old and older and those with chronic illnesses Okay, so uh, looking at the efficacy of vaccines, so uh, we see that there are many RCTs for the every five-year vaccine, the PPV23. So ginagamit yan sa matatanda to prevent pneumonia and death. Here is the mortality benefit. So when you see graphs like this, you would like to see now when given the vaccine, the mortality rates are reduced or the survival curve is better. Such as what is seen here, yung blue was the group that was given the vaccine and you would see that the survival rates are much, much improved compared to the placebo group. Okay. How much death can we see? Have we seen with the uh, pneumococcal vaccination? So, ganito kadami yung deaths that could have, could, or probably averted because of the presence of the pneumococcal vaccine. And in different parts of the world, here naman, when we try to see child deaths because of uh, vaccinations now present, so worldwide is the graph on the left. Tapos sa Philippines, we've done, we've had some achievements also. So these are the number of deaths in children averted by uh, use of vaccines in the last several years. Okay. Moving forward, meron ring mga vaccines for potentially cancer-associated viral infections, Hep B and HPV. So this is Hep B, and it's also part of our EPI expanded program for immunization. So dapat tayo lahat ng nakikinig dito ah, dapat meron kayong hepatitis B vaccination. You'd like to prevent getting the Hep B virus because sometimes for about 10% of people who get the infection get into a chronic phase and there's this people who would eventually get the uh, hepatocellular cancer from hepatitis B. So in a way, getting the vaccine makes it possible also for you to prevent hepatitis B. Uh, hepatitis B related, hepatocellular CA. So, hindi na mahirap. It's required for most, for example, for many uh, students now. This is uh, part of the requirements, making sure you have Hep B, particularly for healthcare force. Okay. These are the indica other indications for Hep B vaccine. Okay. And then the other group would be the vaccine for HPV kasi nga um, meron data that tells us that chronic human papilom papilloma virus infection can lead to um, cervical cancer through the association with uh, severe cervical dysplasia. So there has been some uh, developments in the last decade of uh, getting uh, uh, HPV vaccines, specifically uh, starting off with uh, young children to prevent HPV-related diseases. Uh, this is not just um, uh, for females, but also for males. So these are some photos of, uh, don't get shocked, ah, baka mas shock kayo. These are some photos of HPV virus and how it looks like in human, male and female. These are cervical CA and you know that this is present 
um, especially in the Philippines. This is how it may look like, cervical CA. And it's not just with women, so there are recommendations also for males because there's HPV-related diseases in men as well. Yung genital warts, di naman siya cancer, pero it's so, you want not to have them, so it's also part of the reason why we give uh, HPV vaccine. So let me go to just highlight success of immunization. Dapat hindi na masyadong tanong to for us. This is a fact that vaccines save lives. It's, for example, impossible to know exactly, but we said kanina half a billion people. No? So there's also the collective social benefit in a high vaccination coverage. So hindi lang ikaw yung protected, but your family and your community. Herd immunity is a concept that seems to tell us that there's a protective barrier that we create when a lot of people in our community uh, are vaccinated. So sometimes may mga taong can't get a vaccine and in a way you also protect them through herd immunity. So this is a table that I uh, found telling us how many of our people must be vaccinated to achieve the protection we want collectively. So we see na pag highly uh, infectious, parang dapat mas marami, mas malaki, mas mataas yung threshold to uh, achieve the protection we want on a community basis. So we, in the immunity lecture series, we tried to uh, say this in our local language. So ito yan, pagkakaroon ng resistensya para sa buong komunidad mula sa nakakahawang sakit. So parang ganito yan, when we have more people vaccinated, which is represented here by the green uh, people, it's, it's probably high, more highly likely than even if there's one or two infections that happen in the community, baka hindi ganun kadami yung mahahawa because of the presence of herd immunity. Okay. So our government has this EPI or Expanded Program Immunization which offers through government a uh, free vaccine that is usually present in our local health centers for children, infants and children. But uh, it's not limited to just children because as we grow older, we also need our vaccines. So let me go over lang. This is also a part of our usual slides. Parang meron kasing persistent fake news that happens. And sometimes we get into this situation where people continue to ask us. So if we try to list some of the most frequently asked questions, ito pa rin sila. Are vaccines safe? And the answer is yes. There's been some news like a decade ago that persists na vaccines may, might cause autism. So the answer is no. Scientific evidence show na wala talagang autism, that no vaccine was associated with autism. There was one uh, article that came out like two decades ago, but since then the authors of that article has uh, removed their names from the authorship and said that it was not a true the data that was presented there was not true. If I was vaccinated before and get vaccinated again, will I get an overdose of the vaccine? The answer is no. So sometimes, di ba, yung mga hindi alam ng student, nagka-hep B na ba ako or hindi? While we usually do a hepatitis B surface antigen test, if you do get another vaccine, you won't get an overdose. The next FAQ, uh, can I get all the vaccines at the same time? So, pwede bang sabay-sabay sila? Di ba sa, sa bata, yan ang talagang ginagawa. Several vaccines can be administered at the same time in one clinic visit. Especially during this COVID pandemic, we really want to uh, save uh, 
or optimize the clinic visits. What if I miss a dose? So the general rule is um, increasing the interval between doses does not diminish the effectiveness of the vaccine. And uh, you can catch up. So may mga catch up schedules. So that's what we want to do. There are some persisting myths. So ito nang mga to, parang myth na to talaga. So better, myth one is better hygiene and sanitation will make diseases disappear. So vaccines may not be necessary anymore. So the answer there is false. Ang facts ay uh, we really need our vaccine. So even if we keep on like hand washing, keep on hand washing, and cleaning, we still need to get our vaccines. Myth number two, uh, vaccines have several damaging and long-term side effects. Vaccination can sometimes be fatal. So this is a very false statement. No? So vaccines are safe. Most reactions are minor and transient. So and very serious health events are extremely rare and often investigated. Myth three is uh, giving Lola more than one vaccine can be risky and can overload Lola's immune, vac uh, immune system. So the fact, uh, it's false. The fact is you can really give vaccines safely together. So most of the time when our Lola's visit us, we can give the flu vaccine with the pneumonia vaccine at the same time. Myth four, many people, even healthcare workers, don't believe in the flu shot, no? And think that flu is just a nuisance and vaccine isn't effective. So is this true or not true? This is false. And in fact, especially during the COVID pandemic, influenza is real. It could cause serious disease. These are the age groups we talked about that uh, the special vulnerable groups who especially need the flu shot. But in general, it's already recommended to all of us. Myth five, panang ito, lumang lumang issue na to, but uh, sometimes it persists. Contain mercury, which is dangerous. This is false. The amount of mercury to be a preservative, sorry, is really, really very small and it will not lead to adverse effects to the, to the person who will receive the vaccine. What happens when we don't get vaccines? So yun na nga nangyari last year, we had this measles outbreak no? in the Philippines. And that's probably what happened. So we again became in the highlight, sensationalized also. And that was because uh, we started to have uh, reduced rates of uh, measles vaccination. So uh, there was a lot of effort from the government to uh, try to get all the children revaccinated for the measles and uh, avert the outbreak that was happening during that time. Okay. But uh, again, uh, it's very possible that uh, these outbreaks may happen in light of the current situation. Maybe you remember that uh, recently, more recently than the measles vaccine, we had the polio outbreak also. So if you look at what was, has been happening with the measles control in the Philippines, while we have made a lot of progress, until 2008, achieving high uh, vaccination rates. There was a period now we started to go down and that was when the outbreak happened in 2014 and recurred in 2019. Okay. So uh, one of the things that uh, uh, happens when uh, there's a lot of uh, mistrust in vaccine may be related to myths or fake news is the feeling of vaccine hesitancy. So yung outbreak ng 2019, sinabi was maybe because of the vaccine hesitancy. And if we look at the context of that, 
maybe it was uh, because of many other things going on in the country during that time. Vaccine hesitancy refers to a delay in the acceptance or refusal of vaccines despite this being available in our usual vaccination services. So at that point, if you would see in this uh, infographic, um, they noted that the coverage for immunization was as low as 29% in some parts of the country. So when uh, Dr. Larson and Hartigan Gol looked at uh, vaccine hesitancy and vaccine confidence, uh, it was related to the um, problems we had with the dengue vaccine. So they became uh, interrelated and one thing led to the next. So here we saw that uh, answers markedly were different uh, related to vaccine confidence in 2015 before the dengue vaccine scare and very different yung answers when they repeated the questions in 2018. Okay. So there's a lot of problems pagka merong vaccine hesitancy, but hopefully during this pandemic, uh, we overcome our hesitation to get the vaccines as we need them. Uh, we can still improve on our vaccination efforts. So if you look at this graph or at this diagram, you would see na yung Philippines, look for the Philippines in this global map. And you would see na we're only around the green color or 40 to 60 percent for pneumococcal vaccine for infants. So there's still a lot of room for improvement compared to all our, the other countries in the world. Ito naman. For DPT, ganun din, no? While many countries are boasting very high uh, vaccination rates for DPT, kasi free na to sa government, uh, we lie around 70 to 80 percent. So, pwede pa improve. And for, these are some of the numbers that came out in one of the health surveys, national health surveys, where we see that our vaccinated children up to two years old, parang pwede pa i-improve. Kung ako yung magbibigay ng grade, parang needs improvement. So while cost is always an issue for immunization program, sometimes it's not just the cost. No? Andiyan na yung vaccine, ayaw pa, ma, ayaw pa ng mga people um, to get it or to get the shots. No? So over the last several years, we've had interventions to address this issue on vaccine hesitation or vaccine hesitancy. We've used a lot of this and many people have tried to take part. Our government and our country leadership have helped and there are uh, already determinants and ways to try to overcome this. So contextual influences, yung about group influences, and vaccine influences. Okay. Uh, I'm showing these tables just to show you na may ginagawa tayong lahat. And in fact, this is our response from our group in the sorority that we're really trying to help in the efforts for more broader immunization coverage for all. For professional societies like the PISME, they come out with the clinical practice guidelines to um, assist people. And uh, there's also the group from the PIDSP that uh, assists for children. And of course, uh, hospitals like this from the PGH, they've included vaccination as requirements for uh, moving up from one level to the next. And of course, a lot of uh, IEC materials also help. So how does this all loop into the COVID-19 pandemic? So yung prop context kasi natin ngayon, we're in a pandemic, paano naman tayo mag 
bakuna. No? So here, uh, I'm going segue to COVID-19. Uh, this is from the Our World in Data. And I really recommend you looking at this uh, data set all the time. Uh, they said here that when we're in the red lines, when our country is uh, represented as red, we're still not, we're, we still need improvement. No? Our numbers are still increasing and we can see now we're in the red line compared to countries who are represented in the blue lines. That means their positivity rates are much less. These are the global deaths from COVID-19. So increasing over the last, we, we feel this, we know this, but this is one that I'd like to show you. So it started off in January, diba? Pero you would see here, yung COVID-19, where does it fit in the causes of death in the world? So up till March, hindi pa natin nakikita ang COVID. Ang number one ay diabetes. Pero here you would see that moving blue graph, uh, blue bar, parang over the weeks that followed since March, it's really creeping up. No? So number, sabi nung, before I used to say, eh, hey, TB is our number one problem. COVID, konti lang talaga. Very low ang um, case fatality rate. But look at the numbers now. It's very, very concerning. So COVID-19, as of July 24, is already number three in the top global causes of death. And very soon, it might over go over the number of cases for TB. So let's try to uh, be more vigilant and try to prevent this. So realistically, the immunization programs have suffered. No? And WHO is trying to get all the countries to just don't forget vaccination efforts during the COVID-19 pandemic. So they've released some guidelines for immunization in the context of the pandemic. And I try to summarize them here. Now, as a newborn, for particularly giving Hep B, BCG, and OPV, dapat yes pa rin yan because it happens in institutions when children are born in a hospital they should still get their Hep B, BCG, and OPV vaccines. For programs that are school-based, it will be very difficult, especially in the context of the Philippines, na wala tayong face-to-face -face classrooms. But we have, must have an alternative to keep the young children and adolescents up to date with their schedules. And for adult immunization, this should continue. So yung even parang predominantly telemedicine, we should try to get our elderly uh, vaccinated, uh, make special arrangement for them. This is the recommendation of the PPAS and PIDSP. Mapa proud si Ma'am Sally if she's here to see that uh, PPS is still very active and gave actual recommendation for the resumption of immunization services during the COVID pandemic. But inherent in this recommendation is the need to practice very strict infection control practices para hindi venue yung immunization uh, activities for the spread of the COVID infection. For adults, why give flu shots and pneumonia shots to adults? Because we'd really like to prevent additional respiratory illnesses and hospitalization through vaccination uh, among people. No? Because uh, if we prevent them uh, in respiratory conditions from influenza and pneumococcal infections, then maybe we could reserve our medical equipment, medications, and of course, our manpower to support COVID-19. So the giving these shots will 
help reduce also the confusion ano, in the differential diagnosis. I'd like to just show this kasi parang I found this interesting and helpful. pakita yung video na to. Uh, so it tells us that uh, if uh, if we're not careful about like the per parang one, it's very easy to catch the COVID-19 infection. And we really need to plan our immunization activities very carefully. Kasi si mommy and child needs to be protected. Hindi sila dapat magka-COVID-19 because they're coming in for the vaccination. No? So it's very good nakita, pinakita sa cartoon na if they're wearing their mask correctly, they will not get the, they most probably will not get the COVID-19 uh, infection. No? Unlike yung the other second guy, di ba? Kasi hindi tama yung mask niya. So nagka-COVID siya. And washing our hands and our masks will definitely destroy the virus. This one naman, I'd like to show this to you. Kasi sometimes our mommies and children will come in with a cloth mask. Uh, this new data shows us na dapat dalawang layer pala ng cloth to be protective. No? So show, I'll show it to you and we can discuss a little bit more. Wait lang. So, um, wait, sorry, wait, ulit, try natin. So this is people just breathing. So on the left top is walang mask. On the right top is one layer of cloth mask. On the lower left is two, two layers of cloth mask. And on the right lower is a surgical mask. So pag nagsasalita or humihinga at may COVID, ganyan kadami yung droplets na are spread out into the environment around that person. So we have to advise our moms to wear at least two, la two, two layers of cloth mask. Here is coughing, no? How much droplets are released into the space around. So parang very protective yung surgical mask. At saka sneezing. So parang ang dami talaga. Pag nagsisneeze yung isang person, magtatago ka talaga. Stay away pag wala siyang mask na suot. But you would see that people wearing a surgical mask almost nabablock talaga and does not spread too many droplets out. Okay. Pero, 
um, when we plan out it's our immunization activities kailangan rin talagang yung physical distancing no so let's say some people are not wearing masks or they're only wearing one layer of cloth mask so many lumalabas na droplets pero basta we are what two meters away you make the seats two meters away para si mommy or si lola at lolo hindi ma-infect from others so these are the key messages i'm on my last few slides we need to understand that vaccines are the most i hope i was able to convince you that vaccines are among the most cost-effective public health interventions they prevent infections and they save lives we went through some of the more important vpds and during this covid pandemic we hope that the efforts on pursuing immunization must be at least part of our health plans and when we're planning this activities immunization activities we need to make sure that safety protocols are in place vaccine hesitancy is a complex phenomenon some of the myths may be related to it and too much hesitancy actually leads to a lot of outbreaks so we ask all of us to be into more science and evidence to guide us on our decisions immunization is the public health's best buy and during this life-changing covid19 pandemic let's not forget the role of other vaccines as we anxiously wait for the development of this new covid vaccine pero ito na lang yung last data na papakita ko uh, kita nyo dito uh, this is trust in doctors and nurses amidst disagreement with vaccines no so parang pinapakita dito hinanap ko specifically yung ops yung philippines na parang taas pala ng ano no ng uh, trust ng people ng ating population sa doctors and nurses it's almost like 90 percent so amidst the disagreement whether vaccines are safe kasi nga uh, question of vaccine hesitancy if we pursue our ano, our initiatives on immunization and other things for the good of all surely we will um, succeed so let's take care of our families and communities during this COVID-19 pandemic, especially our mom and dad, our lolas and lolas, plus the whole family. Keep in mind that you as individuals are only safe if everyone else is safe. So try your best to stay safe. And thank you very much for listening. These are my, most of the data I showed came from this website, Our World in Data, and I really recommend that during this COVID pandemic, you keep yourself updated using this website. It's a very good uh, website to get all the information you need. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Aberba, for that very insightful, very indeed, of course, comprehensive and convincing lecture that you shared with us. We now have about, wow, more than 1,600 listeners, viewers from all over, about 860 registered viewers, 600 on Facebook, 62 on YouTube, and of course, 140 on YouTube live stream. And that's from all over, you know, Metro Manila, Pampano, Cotabato, even from from Canada, wow, we're going international. So the skipping in Niger is a special mission to um, share no, information and education to our colleagues and of course to the league. So I'm sure our audience have learned a lot about how immunization continues to be important for the science pandemic. Questions will now be typed in the Q and A box in the UP Manila live stream and the comments box in the Facebook and YouTube live. So for our first question, Manina, um, from our media partner, now that there is interruption in the regular classes uh, following the pandemic, what is the alternative for the school-based immunization program to ensure that the youth are getting vaccinated? Um, 
I, I think, and I think this is already happening, uh, that there will be an alternative uh, platform for the vaccination programs to continue uh, for children and for adolescents. Uh, I think pinag na yan sa DOH uh, in cooperation with other groups like the LGU, such as some uh, volunteer groups, mga NGOs. Yeah. Okay. So there are clear plans, ma'am, no? from our DOH, of course, in cooperation the professional with societies. Yeah. professional societies. The next question, um, how are you addressing the, but I think you have discussed this in your lecture as well, but kindly and uh, reiterate, how can we address the parental concerns about potentially exposing our children to COVID-19 by visiting the clinics with routine vaccination? Po? Oo. So, kailangan talaga very attentive yung parents when they go to facilities like health facilities, kailangan nakabantay sila kasi yung mga bata madali silang uh, magtanggal siguro ng mga mask nila. And you would see how important it is to really have yourselves protected. Dun sa cartoon, kaya gusto ko yun kasi di ba pinakita, nag-try talaga yung virus pasukin yung bata at saka yung mommy pero the fact that they were wearing their mask properly yun yun mahalaga wearing the mask saka really physically distancing yourself from everybody else na hindi mo talaga kilala so yun uh, parents should be with their children when they go to public places kung dadating yung panahon na children will be allowed to go out no wala pang ganun kasi ngayon so, talagang primary prevention is wearing of masks, physical distancing, of course, uh, proper personal hygiene. So, for some questions, ma'am, ito ma iba pa tayo. I'd like to ask po why sometimes even after three booster shots of the Hep B vaccine, the anti-HBS still doesn't develop or still tests negative. So, okay, ang next, ang actually ang concern niya po, is there a need to revaccinate po? Uh -oh. So for healthcare workers, what we do is we actually double the dose. So yun po yung expert opinion on that. Um, so nakatatlong doses ka na ng 0.5 ml uh, IM for the three doses. And then the next series would be 1 ml already. And then we measure the antibodies again. That's what we do. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much for that uh, information uh, for healthcare providers. Ito, ma'am, no? Um, if you have an elderly patient with diabetes, is the flu vaccine encouraged for them even during this time of pandemic? And what is the best way to care for them after receiving the vaccine? And ulit, si Bill, so yes, kailangan bigyan. Apo, yes, apo. An elderly patient with diabetes daw po, does he or she need the flu vaccine? So yes, but definitely. And how do we care for them post-vaccination? So you know, about the side effects or... The, mm. the current quadrivalent vaccines, usually, unless they have a history of allergies in the past, usually the side effects are very mild. Okay, at most, siguro, uh, local tenderness in the area of injection, but uh, their the um, influenza vaccine is not notable for the occurrence of fever afterwards. So very minimal po yung nakikita naming side effects after. Very minimal po. And another very um uh, uh I don't know valuable concern is how should we go about those children for who were not able to complete their series po during the recommended. A regimen or period of vaccination. Kailangan po nakadalawa lang isa, but they have to go back. Oh, may catch up schedule yan. Depende sa vaccine na uh, you are interested in. There's like a catch up for like adolescents who miss their uh, childhood vaccines and for adults who miss their adolescent vaccines. So hindi pa huli ang lahat. Pwede pang magbakuna uh, at any age. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. We so agree with that. And, ma'am, siguro ito may mga tanong about kasi yung two types of the pneumonia vaccine, or the PPSV and the polysaccharide vaccine and the conjugate vaccine. 
how do we go about giving it or offering it? Or do we need to give both? And if yes, what is the interval for in giving uh, each type of vaccine for? Uh, so, so, so minsan you really individualize your decisions. Uh, uh, significantly, because if as, as a private practitioner, significantly more expensive yung PCV, eh, yung conjugate vaccine, which is supposed to be lifetime. So the recommendations will tell us that uh, starting off from scratch, it's best to give first the PCV13. And then you can opt to give the uh, the next dose of the P, uh, PPSV, the polysaccharide vaccine uh, afterwards. No? Pero minsan naman, uh, kunyari naka-receive na siya ng uh, kunyari, she's already 75 years old, so she already received the uh, PPS, the 23 vaccine before. So, pwedeng magbigay ka lang ng second dose at after five years. So, minsan naman kulang yung money. So, mas preferred na bigay mo muna yung PPSV. Pero, uh, in general, we'd like to give both of the vaccines, especially if they're really ill, immunocompromised. Kasi oh, may, over, may some overlap yung serotypes na kinocover ng mga vaccines. Pero you would see na kailangan sila pareho. Yes. Okay. Very clear po. Kailangan sila pareho. And siguro nga, this time of COVID, no, many uh, healthcare workers, and of course, the link for asking, is there a chance for uh, the COVID vaccine, ma'am, no, to be released soon into the market for the general public use. Po. We know there is mm. a lot of about the COVID vaccine there in phase two trial, but is there a chance for that we could get it sooner? Po? Sorry, po, kasi yes, mga, ano, pa, one or two years. Eh. Oh, I, I, I cannot begin to conceive in my mind <laughs> kung ano yung timeline nito, eh. but I don't foresee it being available this year 2020 parang hindi po yan mangyayari so parang realistically knowing all the uh, needs to especially now to for us to have a safe vaccine and an effective vaccine uh, parang it will happen maybe next year at the earliest yun so sana hopefully maging part part nga po tayo nung makaka-receive that access won't be as hard as it probably will be. Na parang we have the money to buy it and we will have access to it. Yan. Okay, ma'am. And siguro one of the last questions po would be, narali isang tanong dito, um, what is the incidence po, if you have lang naman po, no, of co-infection of COVID and influenza po? Uh, hindi ko pa, parang nilabas, uh, siguro we don't have the data yet for that for this year, no? Kasi nga, parang very, parang very few pa yung, in, yung information about the current influenza surveillance, eh. Ang nakikita natin, uh, and WHO has reported that, that uh, the co-infection between the viral infection of COVID and the bacterial infection is not that high. And in fact, they would not recommend na, di ba tayo, pagkakita natin sa x-ray, tas mukhang pneumonia, parang naturally we give an antibacterial agent. But uh, they're recommending that for COVID confirmed, na mild naman ang presentation, na maybe you could do away with the antibacterial and just observe uh, the patient kasi viral nga yung uh, yung what we think is the cause of the infiltrates that we see in the chest x-ray. Uh, whether yung influenza, whether there, there's co-infection, yun. I don't think, or I don't know yung current data. Uh, pero kasi ang problem, pag meron kang ubo, hindi mo talaga alam, feels like flu, pero hindi mo talaga alam kung COVID siya. So, eh, pagka you present this way, surely mapupuntas ka sa COVID pathway. And then if you need hospitalization, you would be put in the COVID floor. So 
for our regular patients and for you who are watching, parang ayaw mo nung ganito yung situation eh. So kung pwedeng wag ka na magka-flu by getting your flu shot, parang okay po yun na stay away talaga from the hospitals and try to reduce that possibility that you end up, you know, feeling like in sneezing, coughing, yung parang flu lang siya pero you don't know. So mapupunta ka sa COVID ward, ayaw mo nun. So get your shots. Okay, ma'am. Thank you very much. And for our last question, unfortunately, we don't have that much time. So, you last question na po ito. Uh, the pneumonia vaccine daw po, can it be given to younger adults, less than 50 years of age? And yung additional question for to that is, can a cancer survivor receive either the flu or the pneumonia vaccine? So, okay. yung... Uh-oh. So, for... Otherwise, healthy, immunocompetent individuals na hindi pa 50, suggest ko wag mo na kayo magpa-pneumonia shot. You don't need it yet. What you just have for yon. Basta clear sa atin, immunocompetent, healthy individuals less than 50, uh, you just need your flu shot this year. Pero kung, kung meron kayong any kind of chronic illness like congestive heart failure, chronic kidney disease, chronic liver disease, or other reasons to be immunocompromised. Kunyari yung mga cancer survivors, yan, good na po yan na you avail of the pneumonia shots and the flu shots. Yan. And for all people who are 60 and above, kung 50, sige, pinabakunahan ko na rin sila. But yung mga healthy 20, 30, parang wag muna baka sayang yung yung injection, yung vaccine, everybody needs that extra money pa rin. Huwag nyo na lang muna gastahin doon kasi the benefit might, you, you might not ano, uh, get all the benefits that uh, you deserve to get. I'm sorry, Pastor. Pinaka-last question na talaga. Ang <laughs> oh, dami kasi nang interested. If you were to choose between the two pneumonia vaccines nga daw, ma'am, and of course, during the same pandemic that we have to save up on, on our money, which of those two types so would you give for your clients? Or kung kami po yung clients, ano po yung pipiliin namin? The PCV po ba or the polysaccharide vaccine? Ako, ang, kung, ako mag, kung ako, best buy ko yung PCV 13. This is the more expensive one, but it's the more that is long-lasting po. Right? So thank you very much. Unfortunately, even though as we are getting ano pa lang po, ano, uh, into the deep of our discussion, we have to, of course, wrap up and end. And we have to thank, of course, our very same speaker, Dr. Nina Berba, for that very comprehensive uh, lecture and discussion and forcing resilience by debunking of the myths surrounding use of vaccines. So in summary, we have learned that, of course, um, as healthcare providers, no, we should actively offer vaccine to our patients. And of course, we have to um, remind our patients to still um, keep up with their vaccination schedule. Proper advice about the important safety of protocols will guide our patients and families and give them reassurance. Of course, there's been confusion and misunderstandings about vaccines, but vaccinations are important part of family and public health. And of course, we all know as was enforced by our speaker, uh, vaccines definitely do prevent the spread of contagious, dangerous, deadly diseases, including your polio, mumps, measles, rubella, diphtheria, HPV, and flu. And of course, hopefully, pa po as mentioned by mom, including COVID no, in the near future. Okay, so um, that wraps up our today's webinar. Thank you for Dr. Aberbo for taking the time out. Of your busy schedule to share insights with us today. We'd like to thank our partners, the City of Manila, the Philippine Foundation for Vaccination, the AP College of Medicine, the AP Manila Philippine General Hospital, and of course the Miss Ignafi Foundation, our sponsor, the Merck Sharp and Dome, or MSD, and of course our media partners. ABS-CBN Online, Business Mirror, Daily Tribune, DZRH, DZXL, Malaya Business Insight, Manila Bulletin, Manila Times, Philippine News Agency, Philippine Star, Radio, Philippine, Radio Filipinas. 
for supporting us in our advocacy of sharing valuable knowledge as a tool in maintaining one's health and in preventing infections. So for our next webinar, under the Dr. Salvation Gertrillian Memorial Lecture Series and Co-Vigilance, we have immunization in a time of pandemia will continue to be streamed live through the Immunity Facebook and YouTube channel and live stream .edu.ph. So the second webinar is entitled Vaccination in Vaccination Timeline in the Midst of a COVID Pandemic. Is there a difference to be held on August 11 from 12 to 1 p.m.? And the third is entitled How Immunization Will Keep Us Safe in the Start of COVID will be held on August 25. We hope to have you with us. We'd also like to invite you to our year-long um, Dr. Gachalian Memorial Webinar Lecture Series in Pediatrics. This webinar runs every second or last week of the month from July 2020 to next year. And will deliver interactive medical lectures with prominent specialists here and abroad on common medical conditions in the pediatric population. Please join us tomorrow at 12 noon in part to Dr. Eric who is my classmate. For the UP med webinars in the presence or absence of beta blockers in hypertension guidelines, is it evidence-based? to be uh, lectured by Dr. Eric Oliver Tisa. We'd also like to invite you to download the Immunity Mobile app. It's a user-friendly physician-guided health mobile app which features an immunization record tracker, an info atlas and all vaccines available in our country. We can be asked questions and miss on vaccination. It is currently available for free on Google Play App Store. Search Immunity, New Signal C, Medical Society, Kama, Inc., and click the star. Thank you to our online audience who has tuned in today's session. Please stay tuned for some reminders and have a safe week ahead. God bless everyone. Thank you for joining us at today's webinar. The Mu Sigma Phi Sorority would like to thank our partners, the City of Manila, the Philippine Foundation for Vaccination, the University of the Philippines College of Medicine, the University of the Philippines Manila Philippine General Hospital, and the Mu Sigma Phi Foundation. The success of this webinar would not have been possible if not for Merck Sharp and Dome, our advocacy partner for public health, the Postgraduate Institute of Medicine, and the UP Manila Information Management Service. We would like to acknowledge Mayor Francisco Isco Moreno Domagoso and Vice Mayor Honey Lacuna Pangan of the City of Manila, as well as Councilor Leila Lacuna, President of the Liga ng Mga Barangay Manila Chapter, for their valuable assistance in this project. We would also like to thank all who have helped the webinar team in every way possible. Most of all, we thank you, our participants, for spending your time with us. To receive your certificate of attendance, kindly answer the evaluation form by visiting the link on your screen within 7 days. The certificates will be emailed to your registered email address within 2-4 to four weeks. For any questions, Please contact us at immunity.msps at gmail.com or mewebinars2020 at gmail.com. For more details and updates, please check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mspsimmunity and our Twitter timeline at twitter.com slash immunitweets. Today's webinar recording and all webinar recordings may be viewed at the Immunity Facebook page and on our YouTube channel 
tinyurl.com slash MSPS Immunity Webinar or on the Aging Webinars YouTube channel. Catch our next co-vigilance webinar entitled Vaccination Timeline in the Midst of a COVID-19 Pandemic. Is there a difference? Which will be held on August 11 from 12 to 1 p.m. And the third webinar entitled How Immunization Will Keep Us Safe in This Time of COVID to be held on August 25 from 12 to 1.30 p.m. We hope to see you there. We would also like to invite you to download the Immunity Mobile app. It's a user-friendly, physician-guided health mobile app which features an immunization record and tracker, an information atlas on all vaccines available